Here we go. All right. So welcome back, guys, to this new video. It's been a while since my last one, but you know I was busy with life. University was killing me, but now I'm a free man again. So I'm picking up where I left off. Um, so this is my engine so far. So we have the Cerberus gun uh, with a PBR shader. The the shader implementation is a, a straight implementation from the LearnOpenGL website but done in DX12. It's an amazing website, you should totally go, it's really, really nice. So we have the models, PBR shader, environment map, then a couple of extra convolved texture for the lighting. Uh, but this is the, the main part of the graphics. Then here I have some debugging tools, uh, so basically that's debugging UI. Uh, right now we are running on my Vega box, uh, so I have an uh, RX Vega 64. And uh, I'm using an AMD library that basically lets me query a lot of information about the car. So you can see uh, core usage, temperature, like for example, we are around 65 degrees, um, 65, 64. There is core clocks. Uh, there are a lot of things, right? Uh, for here, we have the time framing, uh, a frame distribution. Basically, I create a, an histogram of the buffer, uh, uh, sorry, the frames. I think each bucket is three frames. Sorry, three, three milliseconds. So we can see here we are all below three milliseconds. Just some, we got a spike in one. So keep in mind also this is really not optimized. I think the card is not even going uh, full clock because like the, the amount of stuff it's doing is, is really small and also it's, it's heavily CPU bound. Anyway, then here we are tracking memory. This is something I wanted really from, right from the beginning because it's really easy to leak memory. So this helped me massively to figure out when I was leaking stuff. For example, when I was resizing my window, uh, I realized I was not freeing uh, the render target that I, that I used previously. So you will see the, the render target handles heap basically being free, uh, full um, really fast and then you crash when the your heap is full. So that's I wanted to have right away. Um, then you have, of course, you can debug different passes. That's pretty standard. Uh, here is that you can debug or actually play with the post processing stack, right? So for example, here we only have one uh, pass in the post processing stack, which is uh, gamma and tone mapping, right? So you see you can you can play with your with your exposure. If you want a higher exposure, you can play with your your gamma uh, curve. So you have quite a bit of control. You can figure out the value you want and so on. Uh, the next the next button we have here is the render graph. So under the hood, uh, the engine is using a render graph. This is my poor attempt to automatic layout of a node graph. Uh, I guess we'll do. Uh, so this is using a basic MGU sample uh, that I found on the, their GitHub. Uh, it's really basic, so you cannot create a disconnect right away, but that's actually not something I want to support. For the time being, basically you have your graph, you modify it through code, okay? Uh, for example, when you, you, you change which debug frame you're on, an extra node is going to be created here, where basically it's going to bleed over the request as fast as you want. But I just really quickly wanted to, to explain the idea here, is that basically I have an asset manager, which basically holds all the data that you're interested to into, uh, so all the data is there, so I can really focus on the data layout. So that's something I really wanted to focus on, um, and how how the data is layout and how is it transformed, right? So then you can request some data. So in this case, I'm only exposing materials, meshes, and matrices, right? Uh, then this data goes into the graph, and it can even be transformed. So let's say here in the graph, I have I'm going to have a node which can be culling, right, the CPU or GPU culling, you're going to need some resources for that. And then only some matrices, for example, will survive and some meshes. So the node will be able to spit out the formatted data where basically the compressed, not compresses, but compacted data, sorry, where basically only the survive matrices in the geometry move through and go to the G buffer pass, right? Um, I'm thinking about this, this memory manipulation is going to be done by the asset manager. Um, so basically you do all your calling, you have a series of data and then like for example, you, you make a compaction request. 
the, the manager is going to do it. So I might do it in parallel, you can do whatever. And then you have a resulting uh, handle because what we are passing here are handles down the graph. Anyway, so we have a simple G-buffer pass, then G-buffer spits out a geometry buffer, specular, normal, a series of buffer. Actually, the specular is quite more, but I call it a specular buffer. It has the metallic, etc., and then the depth, right? Then, for example, the tree buffer go for the deferred lighting, and then you use the depth uh, and the full screen pass, basically, uh, from the lighting to render the skybox. Then you have the post process stack, this is actually what you see here, and then you go to the final blit, right? Where basically you do your uh, your copy to the to the actual um, frame buffer of your swap chain. And this is it. This is the graphic part. <clears throat> But there is a lot more going on in the background. Something I really wanted to to improve on on all my previous attempt of an engine or toy engine, viewport, call it whatever you want, is that I wanted to to have better loading time. Uh, all my previous engine had really poor handling of the geometry. Uh, like I was actually really not using an index buffer. I had an index buffer, but it was like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All the way so basically it was not using an index buffer just because i was reading the obj poorly but i decided to fix that so finally i built a nice uh, index buffer out of it i do plan to to plug in uh, the mesh optimizer um, so basically you can manipulate after that for improve um, post vertex cache heat and so on and also like uh, basically, I don't want to do any kind of um, processing data work when I, when I start up the engine, it sh like a proper engine. You should just load the data in a format which is good in a, uh, good to go straight on the car, straight to be used. In order so, in order to do so, I created a resource compiler. The way the resource, and I'm gonna talk more. I actually, made a blog post about it. If you want to have a look, uh, my blog. The resource compiler uh, uses plugins, so we can see here where you can load extra functionality. So for example, you have a model compiler, plugin, shader compiler, root signature, texture compiler. And the way it works is actually this. So you can actually show you here. Here was the compiler running. I was com compressing some textures. Um, and by the way, um, I'm gonna talk a bit more about texture later. But so you can see when the compiler starts, it automatically loads up all the plugins that it finds. Uh, so text compiler, share compiler automatically loads them, and then it's going to execute a series of commands. Those commands comes in into a JSON file, pretty basic. So you can see it's a JSON file. This can be maybe in the future improved, like you can distribute one command per machine, and so on. You can probably do quite a bit of interesting stuff in this space, but for now it's super simple. So it's a list of commands, it's going to execute them one after the other. And you can see this is exactly what happened here. So it's going to compress all my texture. Um, so basically now at, at the startup, the engine the engine is quite fast, right? So it, it's pretty much instant. Before it was going to require me a lot, a lot more time that they ended up basically having a multi-thread and an async load of assets, which is still a good thing because once you get in a proper game, not in a simple example like this, you're gonna need it. But for now, this is already a massive improvement. Uh, about texture, it's been a massive um, pain in my neck because uh, something I was not used to, I never compressed my texture. They were always like BMP. Um, so I started to doing this properly. And it's not trivial, like generating the compressed MIP maps or cube maps, it's not trivial. So I ended up trying quite a bit of different libraries. So the first one I used is Compressionator from AMD, and it actually works quite well. The only problem was, <coughs> apologies, it was not able to generate MIP maps. Uh, so they're actually going uh, to release in the future a massively updated version, which is, should be CPU, GPU, uh, MIP maps, convolving, you name it, right? Um, and also I, I had a bug uh, so you can see on the compressionator, there there is a bug that they are looking into it for generating uh, in the normal maps. 
So I think it's only with DXT files you start to get this weird artifact. It took us a while, as you can see from the post, it took us a while to, to reproduce, but they were amazing. And they actually, in the end, they finally managed to, to reproduce the artifact, so they're looking into it. So meanwhile, I needed to use, uh, also here you can see the, for the mid generation that they're going to support it. But anyway, I needed to find something else. So meanwhile, I'm using Crunch, which is really, really good. It took me like, it took me like an hour to integrate and start in my compiler. It's really, really good. You should give it a shot. It's from Binomial. Uh, it's under Binomial now. So it, it's really good. So basically now I have proper MIP map because before I was getting a ridiculous amount of aliasing, even with simple, simple meshes, as you can see. Um, but yeah, so this is a quick, uh, Quick tour of the engine. It's closed source for now, mostly because it's like there is crap all over the place. Um, but that's that's basically the point I got at. Um, and I'm going to plan a lot uh, a lot more information coming out, like about, uh, for example, the, the actual data transformation pipeline I discussed about for for the actual for the frame graph and so on. But that was the point I got at, and then basically now I can I can keep working on on the feature. There is so much I need to fix, like for example, uh, I need to have a stencil for the skybox, right? So right now it's just a big sphere, but if you go back enough, right, you, you get out of the sphere, which is which is silly. Um, so I, I, need, I will need to fix that. Um, and then from there I'm moving forward, so I have an amazing night asset that I'm going to use, so I can prove that, I can start rigging that, and then I can start to have the move, uh, and then starting working about the environment. Oh, there are so many things I want to do. But anyway, so this was a quick update. Hope you like it. Any question or comment, let me know. See you in the next one.